Good evening, everyone. I'm really sorry. We're five minutes late due to a technical hitch, and it doesn't help that um, if any of my Facebook friends are watching on my personal page, I accidentally streamed to the wrong one. So I'm very sorry about that. It's only our third go at this, so please bear with us as ever. Um, I'm Gemma. I'm from Tired Mums Coffee. I've got Laura and Claire from Thriving Families with me. As part of our Tired Mums Coffee mission, well, we are on a mission to improve peer support in the motherhood experience. As part of this, our live chat series is aimed to try and give mums a little bit of information, place to share stories, ideas. Um, yeah, and just a bit of support by this all for free. So hopefully you've joined us before and you enjoyed them and you're back again. And if, it, if it's your first time, welcome. I forgot about Dave. <laughs> I forgot about Dave. Oh. We've got a new fur baby. I say we, Laura. New addition to Tyrone's coffee. Oh, oh. so cute. Um, yeah, th thanks for joining us, Claire. We, yeah, we really appreciate it. I think some of you probably already know that um, Claire was voted um, as our first organisation to receive the 1% of our coffee sales. She was very oh. popular in terms of donations and votes as well. So, um, yeah, we've obviously got a very nice group and community going up, up in Warrington. Um, oh. And yeah, for those who don't know Claire, um, she's a founder of Thriving Families Together. Um, so Claire supports new and existing mums to, to feel fulfilled. <laughs> That's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, in, their, in their role as a parent. And I know she goes above and beyond for, for the mums and is there sort of for one-to-one -one support signposting all sorts so yeah you do, do a brilliant job and we're really chuffed that you're going to get um the one percent of our coffee sales and, and I know I know we're just getting going but hopefully we can um, together we can do something good with that oh yeah no it's great I'm, I'm really grateful I was so grateful I was, I've never done anything like this before and I've never been nominated for anything either so oh. I was so grateful <laughs> to have been nominated so yeah thank you thanks and thanks for inviting me as well thanks for having me you're well. <laughs> very welcome yeah um, would you all right, be all right, Claire, just to sort of kick us off to tell us a bit about sort of your bit about you, really, other than what I've already said, and um, your journey in, with helping mums and, and how you do it, really, and, and, and why you do it? Yeah, so um, so I said, so I'm Claire Miller and I live in Warrington, so I know we're, there's a bit of a distance between us, isn't there? But hopefully, like you said, we can join up together in the future. We're very like minded in what our passion, where our passions lie, and what we want to do in supporting mums. Um, it's only really 45 minutes away. Yeah, yeah, it's not that far. It's not that far. It's nice to travel and go and see a different part of the country. Um, so yeah, so I'm a mum to three um children. Um, so I've got William that's 13, Sophie that's 10, Harry's five. Um, and I think I set five and families up really because it was support that I wanted myself as a mum. Um, mm. I've tried to fill a few little gaps locally in Warrington that I feel things that mums need. And as I've been doing it, so I set it up three years ago, just after I had Harry, my youngest. Um, I decided to set the little group up. So I run the Thursday meetup group. Um, like I said, that's been going for three years. And every I just review it all the time. And I'm led by the moms on what they want. So it's just evolved over time, really. Um, so, yeah, the why is because I, I wanted that support myself and I recognised it kind of wasn't around. Um, yeah, and then I, I blend in um, the parenting support as well. So I always say, like, professionally and personally. So I work in Warrington um, in the local authority for early help. So I've supported families a long time and um, supported families now for about 13, 14 years. Family support and now um, in a safeguarding hub. Um, so I've always delivered like parenting courses and, and my passion just lies with supporting families and um, trying to help make a difference and just ease some of that pressure that we find ourselves under as mums. We're, we're all mums here um, tonight as well. So um, so yeah, that's that's kind of me. I think. And I think that the pressure comment is interesting because I think it feels like there's almost more and more and more, especially around, um, I don't, there's so many working mums, isn't there, on a more, because a lot of people have to these days because we need two incomes to keep the average sort of houses running. And I think that in itself increases a lot of pressure. It's just the juggle, isn't it? It's the mental load, it is, it is the, the pressure on yourself as well as to sort of hold everything together. So, um, I was say, what are your sort of experiences of being a mum? We've got a few questions really for you, but I'm conscious if I kind of hit, hit you with all of them. It's a bit, so what we wanted to talk about really today, if it's all right with you, is sort of your experience of being a mum and, you know, did you have periods sort of where you struggled? Do you feel that the support out there is enough? Can you share any experiences of mums you've helped that may sort of help or inspire others? And, um, but if we break that down and sort of take it in turn, because I'm conscious if I was asked all those at once, I'd be like, mm, okay. It feels like an interview. Well, I've got to remember yeah. everything. Yeah, the job. <laughs> I'm sure you will, yeah. <laughs> So in, in terms of you being a mum, you know, were there periods where you, or I think there's a period where everybody struggled, I think anybody that says they don't, sorry, would be lying, but are there any particular periods that you can think of? And Yeah, I think the, the, the first year, definitely. So 
I always say it feels like a little bit of a journey and I use the peaks and troughs because I think with the first, like I've got three and, and still I struggle. Um, it's really difficult to kind of like manage all of them. Um, but the first year particularly, I think really um, my eldest, because you are finding your feet and there's just so much, like we said, oh, there's just so much pressure that I think you've got to do it all, be it all. You've got to have like this amazing like front and, and see that you're coping and see that you're managing. And I think that just, that pressure just builds and builds and builds. And I was always conscious about what people thought of me when I went out, mm. like if he, if, he, if he was crying, it's because I was a bad mum that I wasn't feeding him, I needed to change him, I wasn't doing what I needed to do as a mum. So we always felt really judged. And he, <laughs> like baby wise, he was, he was a, like what you say, a good baby, he was great, he chilled, he slept. But I think I just felt like I had to be this perfect mum all the time and put all this pressure on myself. But then I think as I've had more, children particularly with Harry I feel like that part's gone but now I still feel like you're juggling it all I feel like I'm constantly trying to like still to this day like I am a mum I don't have to support to mums but I still struggle and I say this to all the mums all the time that I still struggle like I broke down and had a cry with a couple of the mums at the group a couple of weeks ago because I was struggling with Wills when he's in his high school and just things that he's going through and I think because you're always emotionally available like you said you're working you're trying to build a house Kind of, kind of. I, I've tried. I probably put too much pressure on myself because I've got this quite high expectation, and I think it's recognising that as well. That you have to recognise and the expectations we put on ourselves. Now we can try and manage that a little bit better, so we're we're not burning ourselves out. And it's kind of the like you say, then the mixture of the challenges, I guess, between sort of five and thirteen. And it's funny if a few people have commented over the last few days about you know, is it for sort of people of all ages? Because I think we tend to sort of go, oh, there's a new baby, oh, you know, the challenge of learning that. But actually, I think each stage as you go all the way through. I mean, my eldest is not even four yet, so that's as far as I've got. But from what like you're just saying about high school, each thing seems to come with its own different challenge on top of the other two at different stages, and those those challenges. Yeah, it is. I feel like it's, it's that linear. I think your expectation when you first become a mum is that it's really hard work, but it's going to get easier. And I always say it because I feel like I don't want to put the fear of God into everyone, but it, it is like a really unrealistic, unrealistic expectation. And those unrealistic expectations we put on ourselves, I think, then impact on our mood, our self-esteem, our confidence, because we tell ourselves that we've set the bar, we've told ourselves it's going to be like this, and then it's not, and you think, well, it's my fault, I've done it all wrong. And you just go around in a vicious circle. And like I say, it still happens to me now. I still have moments, and then I like I have to balance myself out, my husband will say, come on, Claire, you, you need to get a grip. You, you, you really are taking it too far now, and he kind of reins me into it. We work quite well together as a team. But, yeah, it is, it's not, it's just that expectation. And that, my strong belief really is that really early parenting that kind of trying to get in there early with parents to prepare them for the parenting journey and then I feel like if we could get that part right and I'm not saying anything that most people don't already know but I think if we can get that right the impact on the pressures of the mental health services and that type of kind of of support I think would see a massive impact if we can just get in and do the early parenting but what I find really difficult is when you don't already know what you know, it's really hard to say to someone, come on, do this parenting, because they're not there in the mind. It's only when you're in it and you feel really hard. But then, if, not that it's too late, but then it's really hard to try and take on board advice and support. Well, not so much advice, it's the support, like the really informed support that, because I'll never, I always say to people, I'll never tell you what to do, because there's nothing worse. But can you what... imagine if, if we did say to people, this is what parenting is going to be like, and this is what you're going to feel, and this is what's going to happen, and it's going to be like this, and it's going to be da, 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 but it's all perfectly normal. People would probably be like, Thank you, I won't bother trying to be a parent, yeah. I'll just move on and get another dog. I oh, know, no, reality, isn't it? It would, and you feel like it's one of those where it kind of like has to go like alongside each other, as a, and that, that's what I try and create really through the group and the support that I offer. It's like working alongside, led by them, so when they have a question, I can kind of then try and step in and support. So yeah, I think that's why you've really hit on a gap though, Claire, with what you do, because mm -hmm. you are an expert in lots of different areas around parenting and early years and all the stuff that you do. Um, but you kind of open it up in a different way where you you sort of encourage that conversation. There's the authenticity. People feel that they can open up rather than going straight to there's these you know tips around sleeping or whatever it is. You kind of create that community and that safe space for people. And, mm -hmm. I, and I don't think that's there for a lot of, you know, a lot of parents, is it? I think that's yeah. what, what you do is quite unique and probably has a really big impact on on your mums. Yeah, definitely. And I encourage them to support each other. So I think that whatever someone someone's struggling with one thing, 
then they start to openly discuss it and then they help each other. So I really encourage that through the group mm -hmm. um, and the WhatsApp group that I offer as well. I'm being mired. Bear with me one minute. No, you're fine. It's all right. Pardon? I don't yeah, want to being a mum. <laughs> Just go and ask your dad. <laughs> I've got a really important question about his Warrington season ticket. Just right now, when I'm right in the middle of doing something. I can just see him there in the front of my eye. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But, yeah. So yeah, back so to what... Oh, sorry, go on. I was going to say I hope we answered that question because I felt like I was distracted. No, I think you did. Oh, thank you for saying yeah. that. I've gone now, but it, someone's brought me a cup of tea, so that's lovely. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, sorry, back on track. Going back to what you were saying then around um, the impact on the mental health services, et cetera, et cetera. I suppose that ties into like the second part of... Um, my questions my interview questions um and I do you feel that there's sort of enough support out there for mums and I suppose it goes back to the changes doesn't it pre and post covid so I mean like we know from our own experiences kind of we had one maternity leave before covid and then the second one I mean Emily and Jodie it was just as covid had kind of we were just coming out of lockdown weren't we so things were just starting to ease up but our anxieties were still probably firmly within the lockdown mentality so I mean we could really see the difference in terms of activities all that kind of thing but I guess in terms of what you work with all the time, do you think the provisions are out there to support mums? I think in one thing particularly, we have got more and more support opening up. Um, I saw an email yesterday um, about some perinatal um, support training that's been offered locally. I think it's there, but I think it's just really kind of, I don't know what the word is, like drilling down and actually letting mums know, let mums know it's there and what it is. Because there is all like, that stigma and attached to reaching out and I think it's breaking down that barrier. And I think sometimes that comes when you've got that really good connection with someone and you feel like you're not judged and you're relaxed and you can open up in a safe place. And yeah. I try and encourage that through the group and the support I have. Oh, no. uh, and then I can then confidently sign post on because I'm not an expert in all of all of this. But I, you, know, all right. <laughs> you just froze a little bit, but I think you're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you hear what I said? We did. It was just your face didn't move. <laughs> but I think you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a funny face. Um, but yeah, so I think it's just it. We are. We have got support. I think it's not that it's it's not there, but I think it's the way we kind of then bring it down to the level of the mums that need it and be really kind of yeah. open, honest, safe, non-judgmental and letting people understand how, we, how it all works. Like you just quoted our values there. Yeah, you did. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's probably something that would resonate with us because it's funny, we talk about peer support in terms of what we're trying to do. And it's quite interesting, really, because I think a lot of the time people will jump on, you know, oh, oh, so where can I come? Is it like a free coffee morning type thing? Whereas actually, and I've talked a lot about this this morning, oddly enough, it's how we kind of, same as what you've just said really we don't necessarily need more experts we're certainly not claiming to be experts of anything but actually if we can kind of join the dots as I called it I think there's lots of things going on and lots of people that know lots of great stuff to support but it's actually how we link everybody up to support each other and into all this kind of stuff and and I guess I suppose what we'd see our roles in terms of peer support is like facilitators I suppose of all, all that a bit like what you've just said really so that's quite interesting across two different areas we've come to the same conclusion yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I think, and that's what I like to do best. I do like to kind of, like you said, join up the dots because I can't do it all in the group kind of naturally. I've said, like, I can step up and I can help, which is great. And they really get something out of it as well. But I think at the same time, I need to work with other people, help me to make mm -hmm. sure that I'm giving the, the, the best support that I can. Um, and making sure that I'm all right is the thing that's so important as well. There's no point on me being fully burnt out trying to do it all in one man band and then I end up yeah. just not being able to do anything at all. So I feel like I'm, I learn my own kind of boundaries and ensure that I'm well enough to, to do everything that I do as well. And that's really important, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm sure I've got someone else outside the door going, Mom, Mom. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Dads are there, but somehow they, you know, they just don't quite... <laughs> No, they're not doing something. They're just have nothing. <laughs> oh. I need a drink. That's what I usually get. <laughs> I'll get the toilet right next door and Harry will go, can you just wipe me up? <laughs> oh, I love him. <laughs> right, so, it's the real life one. Have you got any experiences um, that you sort of be willing to share? Obviously, anonymously, I'm not asking you to um, portray any confidences, but sort of any scenarios where you've either seen a positive impact on, on helping a mum or anything that people have been struggling with that, you could share that would perhaps help somebody else that's in a similar situation that might be watching listening yeah I think well positively I think with the group in Warrington that I've moved a couple of locations and I've just set up another group and just 
to see mums come back. So when they come through the door the first time, and I try and make them feel as comfortable and as safe and as welcomed as they possibly can. And I know and I understand that it doesn't work for everyone. Um, but to see them come back week in, week out, and the friendships they make and the connections and the relationships, that to me is massive. Like it's such a good feeling when they come back, even just that small thing else. But I think I don't know, it's really hard. I've got loads of examples, my mind's going a bit blank now, but I think the relationships that they all make as well. It, it's always it's like, like it's not me. I can add it for the facilitator, but then of all of this, but then the relationships that the mums make and how much they say that that has helped them. So they kind of like meet up in an evening. They they, they all organise their own evening things, and um, they meet up outside of my group, and I encourage them to do that. Like I'm not I'm not there tomorrow. When I say look, I'm not there tomorrow, but please go out. It's not all just about me in the group. This is like building your confidence. Mm. So when I see all that happening, that that really makes me feel kind of really like positive that I am doing a good thing and it is working and it's everything that I want it to be. Um, I deliver um, some weaning workshops and kind of that's through the parenting support and the feedback that I get from that and just like I should have probably wrote some things down actually because my brain's gone a bit but I think just the feedback that I get from that that they feel kind of reassured and confident in themselves just by what I'm kind of delivering and, and the information and the, that I'm sharing with them is, is such like a huge achievement for me knowing that I've put time and effort in is that like it's yeah. not about the money for me even though my husband probably thinks what are you doing why are you not actually any more money but it's not it's more about kind of what the mums are getting out of it I think um, I just feel reassured that other people struggled with it. it's funny even now you say weaning and I go like mm -hmm. I really hated it and I'm glad I never have to do it again but um, when other people just felt like we're so confident and so on it and this and the other night thinking oh my god and like you say the difference between oh number one I think I had a meltdown with my mum once over like whether she's got the right balance of food including lentils and I don't even know where my head was at with this I was so stressed out with it choking on a banana etc cetera, etc cetera. and with the second one I don't even know what I fed her if I'm honest it's funny but it's just that whole yeah I don't know just the perception that everybody's got this everybody's on it everybody's sort of baby led and that's their thing and I couldn't do it because it made me feel sick and oh yeah. yeah and I think that's just touch actually one mum that I've met over in the group where she said herself like I'll go to the baby groups like the other local groups um and probably like it's really difficult because like you go in don't you and you kind of look around and if you're not feeling great yourself you look around and feel like everyone else is doing it and they've got it all together and and I, the, the conversation that I was having was like they might look like that but inside I do challenge that majority of mums have got a fight in their own little battle in the head or physically or emotionally in some way um as much as people don't really share all the the kind of negative things it always looks when you're in that place that everyone else is doing it better than you and I always say that isn't the case you've got to be reassured that everyone else is probably feeling it just like you are in another area and you're obviously doing something right because I've seen some of the feedback you've got on your on your Facebook page I think you're very modest about what you do but some of the feedback that's brilliant isn't it and, and when we were chatting last week you were saying that you had a divider in the hall and you were thinking you might have to get rid of it because actually your group was growing and that probably probably says it all really doesn't it about what yeah. mums are getting out of it yeah it is really it is it is really busy I think the only other laughing I was laughing when I said to that because the only thing that puts me off is every Thursday morning it feels like a full workout when you have to put all the mats out for us all to sit on and I think I can't bring myself to fill the whole hall with the mats uh, but yeah I think just the numbers that are coming through and that I'm just the feedback and, and some of the ones like tonight in the group they don't mind me saying but I think they were saying oh I can't believe I'm back in work now and it's I can't come on a Thursday anymore and mm -hmm. All them little things in themselves. I can't pinpoint one thing, but it, it is, and I have to remind myself of them. And I think that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So yeah. And if you've got common themes then around sort of the things people, I mean, I think we could probably guess what they are. I suppose, like you just said, in terms of confidence and and things. But you know, what kind of things do you see? I think like feed, feeding, um, sleep mm -hmm. issues, sleep issues particularly. I feel like when your baby sleep, it you automatically presume it's you doing something wrong. Um, and someone was saying about sleep um, only a couple of days ago. Um, I mean, I was saying that like I think you're transitioning into a cot and things like that. And when you get to like the six months and you're trying to read that, you all the cues and you've got about a million things going through your mind and then you're doing new things and they're starting to eat food and then you start it's like trying to do too much all at once. And it's the baby at the end of the day because they're the ones that are going to process it all. The sleep is disturbed naturally, just like it would be any of us as, as adults. But I think so we automatically presume that when they don't sleep, it's our fault. We're doing something wrong. What are you doing? And then and obviously broken sleep affects your, your own mood, your emotion, your sensitive, how you're sensitive, and then self. 
but you don't think rationally and you start to blame yourself and you just go round. Mm -hmm. So there is a thing there. Um, what else? Oh, we've talked about the weaning, we've talked about sleep. Um, and I think just generally feeling like they've got to do something all the time. You know, like you've got to be out, you've got to be doing something with your baby, mm -hmm. where it's acknowledging sometimes that they just need you. Parents are the, the, the only thing you need at this day, so don't put too much pressure on yourself to fill your whole week with every activity you can. Because no doubt at some point you'll become totally burnt out and your baby will as well. And two together that are quite emotionally kind of at that point, it's not a good combination. So it's just doing what you can with that with the group as well. It's, it's there when you need it, a reason to get out of the house. Um, there's no time on it. Um, Open up again. I find that a bit nerdy. With the older ones, it's kind of you go from like you're saying, filling all the weeks when they're babies when you sort of don't need to, and you could probably just sort of be there. And I find now, um, like I don't know about you, Laura, but like our weeks, by the time you've done nursery, preschool, or whatever, the basics, the swimming lesson, come the weekend, it's almost like we want to get out and do nice things because it's the weekend, but they're so tired, it's almost like no, no, that's it, can't do anything because it's just well, they're oversensitive and just kicking off all the time. Is that is that better? Yes. 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 That's better. <laughs> well, so she kick off. Um, if uh, we, we had a few questions through, and if anybody else wants to add any live, I've um got my phone here, so I'll keep an eye on those as well. Um, so the first one we had was um how best to deal with toddlers when struggling with overwhelm and tiredness. Um, so when they're snappy and short tempered, how do you deal with that, and how do you look after yourself in the process? I guess this is about as well as the tips and the um ideas about the mum's well being, isn't it? While all this is going on. Yeah, I think that's the, the main part. I think naturally for toddlers, as hard as it is, and I'm, I'm like I say, I don't claim to, to be the, the, the perfect parent here, but I think it's looking after you as mum initially because toddlers are going to kind of be quite highly emotional, quite sensitive. They're learning a lot, taking a lot in, tiredness. You've got a lot of factors that potentially are impacting on, on their mood. But at the same time, if we're struggling ourselves, we're not going to be able to regulate them because we're not kind of regulating ourselves emotionally. So I think to try and help ourselves, it's just knowing and knowing your limit. It's really difficult because sometimes it does happen without us kind of realising it. We can be triggered quite easily. Um, but I think it's just knowing our own, giving ourselves some time. Things that we talk about quite a lot now, more I think, making sure we look after us is the main thing so we can then help our children to regulate and it's not just escalating because... Like we know, like shouting, losing it, it's not going to kind of do anyone any favours. And then we only, only feel good ourselves and we just go around in a vicious circle, don't we? So, like I say, I've been there myself quite a few times. I think we all recognise that one. I know I do. I'm not proud of it at all. But yeah, like you say, and sometimes you shout and you know in your head, why am I even shouting? But yeah, it's a bit of a circle, isn't it? Yeah, just go round and round and then make ourselves feel worse. So I think it's acknowledging that, taking the time out that you need. Just getting out. I find myself getting out in the fresh air, just going for a walk. Things that we kind of basic things that we know, and, and then we kind of think, why do that? It's just stepping in, doing it as when we know that we're kind of at that point. But again, with parenting, it's kind of learning that sometimes it's in the moment, it's, it's probably a bit too late, but it's trying to build that into where we like and just kind of be on it. But it all goes a bit pear shaped. I suppose it's a skill at the end of the day, isn't it? If we all had the skills to start with, well, it'd be lovely if we did actually, wouldn't it? But we don't. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I think, yeah, there's no practice run, is there? You're in the deep end and, and this is it. This is real life. And it is all, it is all learning. It's just like anything. I always say to mums, like, it's just like learning to ride a bike or drive a car. You've never done it before. We make mistakes. It's learning and reflecting and thinking, I'm not going to do that again, and kind of building things in to make sure we look after ourselves so we can be the parent that we can be. Brilliant, thank you. What's the next one? <laughs> Sorry, the dog's just farted. <laughs> oh no, is it nasty? <laughs> I can't smell it. Oh. <laughs> but it went quiet. And I could... <laughs> I did hear it. Did you? <laughs> oh, this is going really well tonight. Really well. <laughs> you carry on. I knew I'd giggle that way. Sorry. Do you want me to ask the next, the next question, Gemma? <laughs> so the next one we had was, um, do you have any top tips for in the moment when it all gets too much 
Um, so if yeah, if you're on screaming all day um, and you feel on your own and your dog's fartish, whatever it is, <laughs> any top tips for when it all gets too much to deal with it in the moment? <laughs> yeah, I think it's making sure making sure that um, kind of your little ones are safe, that they they're okay, and maybe they're having that little bit of time out. <laughs> <laughs> kind of walking away, taking a few deep breaths. Sorry, I having a minute. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What are you like? Um, Only wants to know which dog it is, Gemma. Which dog? <laughs> Woody. Woody. <laughs> Spaniel. Oh dear. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, I, I think in the moment that is kind of go to, isn't it? Kind of just stepping out. Obviously, we don't want them to leave our babies and children <laughs> unsupervised, so they're going to get themselves hurt or caught up in something they shouldn't be but I think it's just having that moment of thinking right I'm going to go breathe use some of those breathing techniques calm yourself down make a cup of tea make a cup of coffee um take yourself out of it for a moment call on someone call on your friends call on family just say I'm, I'm struggling I just need someone to come around and just change the dynamic slightly get out get your coat on get your shoes on go for a walk it's just changing it put something on the telly let's sing I always used to find putting the baby TV on and watching this bouncing ball. It start to keep everything and it gives me time to kind of breathe and take them and then you stand up here and get prepared for the next time. You were saying that I have a friend doing that. I think I was at the National Trust or something. One of mine just wouldn't stop having a meltdown and she got the bouncy ball thing on a screen and it just completely changed the I'm always useless. I get so stuck in the moment I can't think what to do to break it if that makes sense. But yeah, that's a really good one, things like that. I forgot just my about that. Changing what changing and if you're in a, I always used to think like I get really stressed out by mess you know like when the kids are getting everything out I used to get really overwhelmed by mess and noise and things like that so like the mess is just going to a different room or get out and then by the time you come back you can deal with it a little bit better yeah I got that I find myself in endless cycles of tidying up some days and it just doesn't really help because you just yeah yeah that's definitely I think, food for thought. I, the worst I think is when as well, well, for me anyway, is when you've got well our second one, Jodie, she she's very just very loud about everything. And you know, like if you're in a public place and you're just trying to get something to eat in a cafe or something, and they just start kicking off for no reason whatsoever. Um, and they're literally, you know, screaming the place down. You don't you just don't know what to do with them, do you? And and you can't reason with them because it's you know, when they're the, the little ones anyway, you can't reason with them. And you just you just have this, yeah, this baby just absolutely losing the plot or a toddler, um, and everybody looking at you, and you think, well, what, what do you do? <laughs> it's stressful, isn't it? I think it just like to gritted teeth, just kind of think, right, I just need to carry on and yeah. hope get this. I always used to have loads of stuff in my bag, no, like snacks or books or yeah. drawing pencils when you get older to try and divert and then just so everyone can kind of regulate and then you can come back down again. But yeah, you know, it's hard work. <laughs> And it's funny you saying about um, like other people watching, Laura, and it's kind of, and actually I've had some really lovely comments of people, you know, after things have happened and gone, oh, I remember that well, or, oh, that used to happen to me all the time, you're not on your own type thing, which is lovely. And really, I suppose, if you st stood back a bit, that's probably why lots of people are looking and kind of thinking, oh, I remember when we were stuck in that phase, da, da, da. but you just think, oh, my God, everybody's looking at me. Yeah. Yeah, because I often look on and feel sorry for the moment, for that person in that moment. And you kind of want to go over, don't you, and try and help. But then you, you don't sometimes know how that's going to be taken. And it is, it's really difficult. But we're all in it together. That's all I say. You're not the only one. Won't be the first, not, won't be the last type thing. No, yeah, definitely. It's happened to mums through all the generations, hasn't it? It's not new. <laughs> no, and there was no. an outfit. Wasn't it about the kid that had the meltdown on the floor of the supermarket? And didn't she she gets down on the floor with them and does exactly the same thing and then the kid gets up and goes like mm, you're embarrassing type thing and walks off. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps we should order a bit more of that. <laughs> I haven't tried that one. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> so another question we've had in is around um it's going back to the sleeping thing, really. So they said my four-year-old has started randomly waking up crying multiple times a night. Is this normal? And is there anything I can sort of do to stop it, I suppose? So I suppose it's understanding that maybe it isn't gonna stop, which isn't kind of the advice that you don't want to hear um and I think I always go because I'm no expert with sleep um only my own personal experience really but I think it's just going and like, I always try and put myself in their shoes so like my I've got a five-year-old um and he struggles like settling in his bed and things like that and, and I always kind of think like what are you what are you going through what what is it that's going on for you to then try and 
in the car, right? Because I think if we're looking and we always get caught up looking for answers, sometimes the answers aren't there. It's just something that's going on for them. They might have started school, they might have started in a new room at nursery, they might have started doing something new that they're processing. So their sleep cycle is going to be kind of disturbed in some way. Um, the developmental part of it is, is it can play a big part. There could be ill, there could be illness there, there could be. And I think it's always that feeling like, oh, I shouldn't be kind of like giving in or, and I think I've learned that over time. I probably didn't, I kind of always with William was kind of like, oh, I need to do this, need to be down. You don't want to get used to it. And as Harry's kind of gone through it, I feel like now I've kind of gone, I just need to be more relaxed and go with it. He just needs to cuddles, he can get in our bed. And it has helped us through difficult times. He's woken up and he's been quite unsettled. But I think we're so quick to want answers to fix it. Sometimes it's just one of the troughs, when I say the peaks and troughs, it's just one of those troughs. Obviously, there are experts out there with sleep that people can reach out to. And 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 that's that's kind of what I think sometimes being educated around sleep and understanding baby sleep, toddler sleep, all the way through can really help to take the pressure off you as well. Because we want to somebody on that there, if you are informed, you can make really good calls of judgment and you don't put as much pressure on yourself to think I'm actually doing it wrong and it's my fault. And I need to fix it if that makes sense. It does. It does. And it's all right. You just click, um, something's gone off in my head around, I want to say sort of a generational thing, but I don't mean that sort of in a bad way. Just around the whole, like you said, we try and fix it. We're trying this, or maybe we're being too soft. And it is. It's funny how you just watch the way people have, have sort of done stuff in the past up to now and, um, and all the changes in handling that such as I remember sort of when mine were young oh no they need to learn to just do then they need to learn to be put down oh no they need to learn to this oh we just need to learn to whatever and I, I never did because I always thought oh it seems really cruel I don't really it's not my type of thing but you're right and then sometimes something happens later on and the first instinct in your head is like oh well actually yeah how do we fix it how do we this is it it's yeah I, I don't know it's just I can't say it's societal thing I suppose in terms of managing it through and it is, it's always like we always, and we do, I think naturally, we always look for an answer. Mm. But sometimes, like, what, we, they can't tell us, can they? Like, when they're younger, we, we don't know what's going on for them. Maybe as they get a little bit older, they can, they can and it's being, and being confident enough to listen to them and kind of take on board their feelings and, and let them be heard, that they're looking into their own little, little person, character. <laughs> And we just need to build all that up, don't we, in them. So I think it's it's having the confidence to just ride it out sometimes. And But in those times, make sure you go into the things that you need the most for you, like reaching out to family members, mm. partners, husbands, friends, just all those to make sure you're looking after you. It is hard, and it's, but it's balancing it out and making sure you get the support in those tricky times. Oh, Claire, you make perfect sense. I can see why you're as popular as you are. <laughs> oh that's funny I know but then sometimes but it is like everything isn't it you say it out loud and you know it and this is where I'm saying it but there are times where I think oh my god I'm getting it all wrong it is normal like I can say it out loud to you guys but at the same time it's kind of like in those moments it's really difficult but it's okay to make it difficult because it's part of learning to be a parent as well brilliant it does make perfect sense it does, it does. Why do we forget all this every day? <laughs> we need to print it out and put it on our walls. <laughs> so we don't forget. Right <laughs> out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember, uh, jokes aside, I don't know if they're watching or whatever, but I think my brother-in-law made a flow chart or whatever it was when um, they, their first was born around, you know, things to do. If, if baby cries, it's sort of step one, two, three, four, five. It was almost like a proper flow process so that they didn't forget anything. And as much as I laugh, it is actually quite a good idea, but yeah, whether people would actually do that or not just tickled me. Yeah, I suppose it's what kind of how your how you know that your brain works and how you work as a person, isn't it? What you think is best? Because I always say to mum, you have that mental checklist, don't you? When the baby cries. Yes, most people have a mental one. Need... Yeah, but if you need a visual, we got all our brains work in different ways. If that works for you, my friend probably would have some kind of spreadsheet because she loves a spreadsheet, so I'm sure she'd do the formula that they want to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Although you'd be proud today, I did use a spreadsheet at work, Laura. I created oh, one of my own back. Mm. <laughs> did it do the job? No, I did make things clearer. I'm yeah. not a spreadsheet person at all. I just can't work Excel. <laughs> no, I'm not. But I'd run out of arrows and scribble on my page. So I was like, I've got to. I've got to put it in some kind of um, format. 
<laughs> have we got any live questions apart from which dog farted or <laughs> no i think we've covered all the all the questions ah oh, that's good hopefully we answered i answered them okay. you did you've been brilliant i i think so for me from what i heard we're going going through it all it's it's about mum's well-being, isn't it? And, and this is, I suppose, what we're all kind of trying to tap into, about actually recognising your limits, recognising when you need a bit of support and reaching out to sort of friends or family, recognising that it's time to step away safely, but, you know, be it go outside for a deep breath, make a cup of tea or whatever, but recognise your triggers, your limits and what you need. And it's OK to sort of act on that as well. Would be my takeaways from it. I don't know about you. Yeah, I think I think the whole... Um... Yeah, but some of the things you said at the, the start, Claire, just hit home for us about our experiences and from talking to loads of other mums and a lot of people, like you said, you know, they, they don't talk about it, which is sort of step one, isn't it? And and having that space to really talk about how you're feeling and, and people that, you know, understand where you're coming from. I think that's kind of a big step, isn't it? Because the mums are always going to have a juggle on, they're probably always going to feel overwhelmed. And I think, it, yeah, that, that bit around being open and honest about where those gaps are and getting people to open up is... I think that's really powerful, isn't it? And the stories and things that they, they really help to get to get that across. And like you said, you know, you can give advice all day long and you can read all the books, but actually you sort of need those the peers around you, don't you, one way or another, to, to give you that support and give you that toolkit to pull on, which is where I think we're we're, we're all in the same sort of boat really in terms of trying to achieve that in different ways for, for mums to make it better now and in the future, isn't it? She's on mute, but I don't know if that means she's run off. <laughs> She's been asked another question. Probably. <laughs> that was really helpful, though, wasn't it? I just think she just, yeah, Claire talks a lot of sense. She does. And like she said, it, it, it's nothing that you don't know when you say it out loud, but you don't kind of think yeah. that. And I think I'm useless for um, having stuff in my back pocket. And I guess probably because I've got so much in my head and so much going on, I always forget to do the basics because it's almost like, oh, God, this has happened. How do I fix it quickly so I can just get back on track? Whereas actually, that's not how life works, is it? No. Oh, she's I think lost, I've lost you. No sound. Um, <laughs> oh, hang on. Perhaps leave and rejoin. Apologies, everyone. You're seeing all our technical hitches behind the scenes. Are oh, you back, Claire? Oh. Can you hear us, Claire? <laughs> oh, there we are. We should be live. <laughs> A live chat with a couple of bits that we wanted to speak to Claire about before um yeah before we finish up um so at the end of our all of our live chats um we like to ask our special guests a couple of questions um so we just wanted to hear from you about what's your favorite thing about being a mum and then what's your top survival tip for motherhood that you would like to share so favorite thing about being I think as bad as it is, as we thought we've just bust, it is rewarding as well. And to see your children kind of move through the struggle difficulties like that they have and then come through it and feel like they've achieved and knowing that you've helped them along the way, whatever it may be, like through school, through hobbies, through activities, through just friendship, social and that type of thing, and, and feeling like you've kind of you're proud of. I think that is the the hard, the best thing for me. It's hard work because you kind of put everything into it but I think it's really rewarding when especially and even when you get those back off others that, that say oh yeah like Sophie's done this Harry's done this William's done this I think yeah because that's the hard work that I've put in that's some rewards from it so that makes me feel yeah like if it's all oh that's nice <clears throat> what's the other question with you watching top tip <laughs> top survival tip to share with new mums if you so, had to leave one thing, what would it be? Say alcohol. So I'm going to drink. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the socialisation part of it, I know that I've got a really good group of friends that I am a talker and I talk through the challenges and I'm not embarrassed to say that like, I'm finding it cool or and I offload a lot. And then when I talk about it, sometimes I find the answers myself. So I think my friendship groups and having that, those people like-minded so mums at school, my friends that have gone through the things that you know you around the twist. And most of the time it can involve like meeting up and having a drink at the same time. So yeah. Always got to be a drink, haven't they? <laughs> Fab, thank you. Is there anything that you would like to say to anybody listening? Anything, any ask of them, anything like that? Or I suppose if the local 
Cliff the local to be. I know we kind of span quite a big area um, and it'd be great to do some face to face at some point together. Um, but yeah, if there's anyone local to me in Warrington that wants to know more, that they can go on my Facebook page, so Thriving Families Together. Um, and I've got my Instagram page on the website, which is www.thrivingfamiliestogether.co.uk. Um, and I'm, I love chatting to people. I love speaking to people about how we can improve, what we can what we can work together, just to provide all the best support that we possibly can um, to mums. Um, so yeah, any, anytime anyone wants to chat, I'm quite happy to. Um, and if anyone wants to come along to a group, parenting, weaning workshop or anything like that, just drop me a message. Thank you, Claire. And thank, thank you for being our much. live guest. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed it. Apart from the fact I was sweating and I probably got a full rash up my neck, but yeah, you can't see that part. No, not at all. You've been brilliant. And I think for us at Tyburn's Coffee, I guess from us, we'd just like to say thank you for watching. Please, same as Claire, go and check out our website, which is now live, www.tyburnscoffee.co.uk. Um, the blogs are on there. Check out our podcast that we did this week. I know that went, um, the links went live yesterday on social media. Check out our social media, tell your friends about us. And obviously with Mother's Day coming up, Please buy some coffee. And one percent will go to Claire. All right. <laughs> very true. <laughs> Anything else you want to add, Laura? No, no, just yeah. Thanks very much, Claire. It's nice to have you as somebody so um sensible and honest. <laughs> You're a great support. So yeah, keep it going. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Very much. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See ya.